Let's talk about carbon. The sixth element in the table is essential to life. Without carbon, life as we know it, from bacteria to plants and animals, would be impossible. In fact, about one-fifth of our body mass is carbon. And every day we breathe out massive amounts of carbon as carbon dioxide. Carbon is the backbone of complex molecules such as DNA. Have you heard of Carboniferous? Ancient forests from hundreds of millions of years ago created carbon-rich coal deposits. The word carbo means coal in Latin. When coal is heated inside Earth's crust, it transforms into graphite. The name graphite means writing stone. Carbon in graphite is arranged in layers. These layers can easily slip past each other, leaving trace residue on paper, which makes it perfect for drawing and writing. What is less known is that graphite is a good electrical conductor. Let's see if we can build a primitive sound keyboard using graphite. First, we'll build a simple sound generating circuit where a photoresistor controls an oscillator chip to produce sound in a speaker. Photoresistors control the frequency of the sound produced by the circuit. We'll replace this photoresistor with a drawn graphite strip. First, we will draw a thick pencil line on a piece of paper and cut it out. Then we will position it on the firm support and attach it to the circuit board in place of the photoresistor. The second wire will be placed along the length of the strip. The shorter strip has a lower resistance producing a higher pitched sound. Okay, hope you get the gist and recognize the tune. But let's look at another property of graphite. Diamagnetism. Graphite is one of the best diamagnetic materials known to muggles and men. We're well familiar with ferromagnetism. Bring a pile of iron bits to a strong magnet and they quickly snap to it. Diamagnetic materials are different. They repel from both the south and north poles of a magnet. This repulsive force allows this bit of pyrolytic graphite to levitate above this strong neodymium magnet assembly. You can see that the chip of graphite does not touch the surface of the magnet and stays in place even when disturbed by air movement. What's fascinating is that water is also diamagnetic, although much weaker. Let's show this in a simple experiment. If we use a strong enough magnet, we can even levitate it. Our bodies are more than half water. Perhaps one day we can levitate ourselves. Scientists have already diamagnetically levitated frogs and mice. But for now, we can at least put springtails on a graphite hoverboard. Although this one clearly needs more practice. And this one just doesn't care to levitate. Well, to each their own. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more on carbon and other amazing stuff about science. Cheers! Cheers.